In this video, we will discuss a different types of a loop structure called a for loop. In the previous video with a while loop, I show you two types of conditions that we can write to make the computer repeat the codes underneath a while loop, right? The first one is related to the x location of the circle. When the x is less than the specific amount, then keep repeating the code, but when it's more than that, then stop. And then the second way is related to the number of circles that we want to draw or the number of times we want to repeat the code. We use the word count to specify the number of circles or times we want to draw. Actually, with a for loop, that is the only type of condition that we're going to write. So let's look at the syntax for a for loop. So you see there is a word for, then within the parentheses, instead of just writing one condition, you have to write three different things here. The first part, we need to declare a variable. We call this variable a counter variable because it's a variable that we will use to count the number of times that we want to repeat the code. The second part is the condition, right? And the question that we're asking within this condition is always, how many times have we written the code? Or is the counter variable still less than a specific number? The third part is the part where we update the counter variable. It is the part that happens after we execute the code and then we have to update to let the computer know, hey, we have repeated the code this many times already. Okay, so let's give it a try. First, we need to write a for loop, right? And then within the parentheses, we need three things, right? As we discussed, the first thing is the counter variable. I want to dive a little bit deeper into this variable first. So this type of variable is called a local variable, which is different from what we discussed in our variable video. It is called a local variable because the scope is a lot smaller. And only within this for loop that you can or anyone can access the value of this variable i. And the reason that we should use a local variable within a for loop is because we only use this variable to what? to count the number of times that we have repeated this code. And we will actually just throw out this variable right after we finish using this for loop. The second piece is that the name that we give it is i, and this is just by convention. And the third thing is that I initialize the i variable to be equals to zero, not one, but zero. In programming, a lot of the times we actually count things starting from zero. So let's say that we want to draw four circles. Instead of counting from one, two, three, and four, we actually count from zero, one, two, and three. So this is something that you just have to be familiar with, that in programming, you start counting starting from zero. So the second piece within the for loop is the condition, right? We want to give a condition that asks how many times we have written the code. So let's say we want to draw four circles, right? What is the question we need to ask? i less than four, right? Why do I say i less than four? It is because I only want i to go up to three, right? Because we want to draw four circles from zero, one, two, and three. And that's why when i equals to four, then you get out of this for loop. And the third piece is I need to update the local variable i, right? And I can do with the way that we did before, which is i equals to i plus one. But you might actually see people write i plus plus as well. Okay. So we have initialized a local variable, we have a condition, and then we have a piece that update that local variable. Now we can write our ellipse function here. So what we want is that we want to write an ellipse function, but we don't want to repeat it exactly the same, right? Because the values from 100, 200, 300, and 400 are actually different. So let me show you something interesting. So 200 is what? It's 100 plus 100, right? 300 is 100 plus 200, and 400 is 100 plus 300, right? And 100 is 100 plus 0. And then what we can do is that it's 100 plus 0 times 100. 100 plus 1 times 100. 100 plus 2 times 100, and 100 plus 3 times 100. Do you see something from 0, 1, 2, and 3, which is the exact same value of our counter variable. 
So what we can actually write in here is that we can write 100 plus i times 100. And by writing this instruction here, where i changes from 0 to 3, it basically just repeat the code that we have copy and paste here. Let's try it. There you go. So I want to show you how to read this. First of all, once you get into the for loop, i equals to 0. When i equals to 0, then we come to the condition here. Is 0 less than 4? If the answer is yes, then we go into the instruction. OK, so once you go into the instruction, then we draw the ellipse at 100 plus 0 times 100, right? which is just 100. It's the first circle here. So we call this function. And then we go back to the for loop. Then now i is updated, right? i is incremented by 1. So now i equals to 1. And then we come to the condition again, right? Is 1 less than 4? 1 still less than 4, then ellipse is called again. Then we go out, and then we update the i. Now i becomes 2, 2 still less than 4, then we call the ellipse function and then i becomes 3, then 3 is still less than 4, then ellipse function is called again, and then we draw the fourth circle. And then once we update i from 3 to be 4, then 4 is no longer less than 4, right? Then we just exit the for loop. And now you can just change the number, however many circles that you want, right? Let me also, instead of hard coding the number 100 here and 100 here, I will create two variables. The first one is I'm going to call it x0, which is where the position of the first circle starts, right? And then this one is actually what? It is actually the spacing between each of the circle. So let's call this let spacing equals to 100. And click play, still the same, but let's say that we change the spacing to 50. Then now you see we can draw six circles with spacing of 50 and with the starting position of x equals to 100. Now you have seen another way of writing a loop structure. You've seen a while loop, you've seen a for loop, so now you can write your repeated codes more efficiently.